You're rolling? Yes. Okay, thanks. You're rolling. Mm. We're called the Milk Carton Kids, and uh, you're listening to the Inside Sleeve on Radio National. This is a song called Hope of a Lifetime that we're going to do in the right key. One, two, three. There's a light that's shining now And a calm wind in the pine For the fate of a fearsome travesty Seems to have forgotten me Seems to have forgotten me If it hasn't learned by now Where I've hit so very long I come safely out into the silence found in the wake of its passing on. In the wake of its passing on, a Spartan smile and westward stare hold a promise in the air. That's the way they used to find their own way home by the stars. Stars on their own. Well, I pray for promised land to replace all I have made. Darkness steals the light I bear, and the hope of the lifetime fades. The hope of the lifetime fades. lovely harmonies of Kenneth Pattingale and Joey Ryan, or the Milk Carton Kids, as they are known. And a song that opens their most recent album, The Ash and Clay. That one is called Hope of a Lifetime. So it seems hard to believe that things weren't going particularly well for you, well, as well as solo artists, despite songs about imaginary dead dogs. Is there a dance of some sort that goes on? How do you actually get to that point where you figure singing together is going to be better than doing what you've been doing solo. A, a part, part of it was very immediate, right? Um, the, you know, we, you, you sing together for the first time and it um, brings out certain parts of your voice that you didn't know were there, it brings out certain parts of your playing that you didn't know were there, certain things you didn't know were possible. Um, and a lot of those things happened on the first day. But then there was the inertia, I think, of two admittedly floundering uh, solo careers that had to be broken, and uh, I'll go. I'll go on record here in Australia as giving Kenneth credit for um, having the foresight to, you know, to see that to, we to end your career, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to end mine and to admit that yours uh, had never started. <laughs> Not sure. <right. laughs> Is, it, is the voice? I'm just kidding. You is the voice something that you have consciously spent a lot of time working on? individually is it something that's been particularly important to you in your music because it, it, t- it obviously takes a, 
a, a shining aspect of what you do together. The voice is a musical instrument, yes. you mean? Yeah. Uh, sure, I think so. Neither uh, of us is trained, though. How not, did you, how did not you, formally. How did you learn? Trial and error. <laughs> a lot of error. <laughs> singing along to other things or singing... In the bathroom, you know, is it the, is it the cliches? No, it's worse than that on stage. Yeah. <laughs> we did that on stage for years and years and years to unhappy audiences. Um, it is true. We both learned to sing and I think found our voices uh, right in front of people. Oftentimes our friends and family who were kind enough to, you know, to support us, I guess maybe saw that there was some p- distant potential to be, to be achieved in our, in our singing and, and songwriting individually. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I cringe now to listen back to old solo recordings of my singing. Mm. There's, a, there's a warmth and a softness to what you do together, which to the listener seems like it would require a fair bit of trust, though. That, that you, you, I take it you have to, that trust is a big part of what you do with each other. Yeah. It is the biggest part, I'd say, in all elements. And I think you've zeroed in on something important about the performance. And for me, it's even more important, actually, in the, in the writing process, which we've become very um, closely collaborative uh, with as well in the writing process. And the, the trust that goes along with um, not just standing two feet away from somebody on a stage every night and, you know, allowing yourself the possibility of falling flat on your face together, but uh, to bring somebody a song uh, in its very early stages, you know, when you, you don't even yourself know what it is yet, and to bring it to somebody else and let them get their hands on it is a very intimate process. It's about as intimate as we get. But we often don't realize as, as listeners or, or we we've, uh, forget to pay heed the fact that when in the act of hearing something as a human being, you actually, re- you know, you're receiving physical pressure on your eardrums. Um, what did Tom Waits say about it? Didn't I don't he remember. say a song is just a really interesting thing to do with the air? Right. That's Something right. like that. I know it's a miss. I know I've missed that quote. Yeah, right you're now. not as eloquent as he is. Um, no, that was just about as out. eloquent, but it was slightly different still. No, that's pretty good, and it picks up the the point of what I'm trying to say is that is that. Yeah, I thought it would be relevant. Right. There are these very particular physical characteristics to what comes out of this guitar, what comes out of my, my mouth, what comes out of Joey's mouth. Um, and if you believe in that, which is a matter of believing in the um, science and the, <laughs> the way things are, uh, then you have to reckon with the idea that two things, physical as they are in life, when they, when they come together, uh, some of them are going to sound good together and some of them are not. And so I, it's what you're saying that it's almost the, the physical shape of the two of you, and you you are slightly differently shaped. Um, that's right. That, that that there's a it's the combination that is sympathetic to each other that creates. That's right. You the know, outcome. there's all this rhetoric his, historically about about um, you know siblings singing well together, and and if 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 you don't think that 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 uh, stems back, you know, the pleasantness of that somehow uh, stems back at the fact that they have very f- similar physical structures you might assume that a brother and a sister or or or, or two brothers uh, have very similar vocal instruments and, and and you know I think the way that you would usually perceive harmony singing or, or even unison singing the 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 closer they are the more pleasant an effect you can probably achieve or a, a natural one I just I just so happen to think you know it's like a, you know it's like a good in, interior decorator the the rug goes well with the choice of paintings, and so I take it though you're talking about your voice, and and Joey's voice being complementary. Yeah. they're not the same, but they right the, the colors go well together. The colors I, I go think well it, together. That's incredibly reductionistic and materialistic, and I happen to think it's a purely spiritual uh, coincidence <laughs> that our things sound the way they do together. I can tell it's going to be a very interesting tour for you too. That's for sure. <laughs> it has been. The, Don't mind him; he's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the comparisons that uh, are constantly thrown at you is is Simon and Garfunkel. Is that just a lazy? No, comparison? I take it as high praise. I, uh, you know, there's something that they do very particularly well that. Uh, I like to think Joe and I make an attempt at or do something similar, particularly in the way that they wrote um, melody and harmony and 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 counterpoint. They do some rather interesting things, just musically, in, in the way they wrote. And I'd like to think that 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 we strive for same uh, for this for similar things. 
I don't think that it came from any sort of, uh, or not, I don't think I can say it, uh, definitively that it didn't come, you know, inspired by that necessarily. But, you know, those, those, those two voices are a part of the uh, collective conscience in a way that how could you ignore the, the work that they've done? I, I hope that is high praise. I do personally find it to be, um, like you said, lazy because, um, well, to me, they're just the most culturally broad uh, folk duo in a long, rich tradition of folk duos. Uh, and so um, it seems to be the most obvious one for people to make. And the, the only reason I think it's, uh, the only reason I'll permit myself to use the word lazy is A, because you did, and B, uh, just because it hasn't actually, like, th- consciously, they have not, it's not music that we've really listened to. It's not something that's been a big part of our lives. It's yeah. not something that we even have really the vocabulary there to draw from. I think there's other places where we draw more, um, more obviously from. Um, so in in that way, it strikes me as lazy. But at the same time, like Kenneth said, uh, they were masters of their craft. So it's it's a good pe- good person to be mentioned in the same sentence as. Let's take another song. Uh, what would you like to play and maybe give us a bit of background about it too? This is a song called Snake Eyes. What is the background on that? I guess I kind of wrote that one, didn't I? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, well, what shall we say about Snake Eyes? The most, the most notable thing was the, um, the, the, its role, its intended role uh, in the film Promised Land, which... Uh, I don't know if that came out here. Did that come out here? I think so. The director of Gus Van Zandt. Mm, yes. Promised Land. Yeah, it sort of speaks for itself. Hopefully. Swing low, swing low For to carry me home In fire the sky of red My breath's gone cold A kiss from the cold A blanket of snow overhead So Hung all these years down from the heavens above. Bleed in the ashes 
the sound of the Milk Carton Kids performing for you today, uh, live in the studio here. Thanks for coming in and playing for us. Oh, thanks so much. Thanks for having us. The Inside Sleeve with Robbie Buck on RN.